this should be a good video for those of you who like um, biochemical pathways, especially uh, the ones associated with longevity, but especially for folks that like to connect dots. We're going to connect a lot of dots on a lot of series of uh, videos. First one about Walter Longo and some things that he found in terms of longevity and the longevity diet. There's also a series that I did on mTOR, the mammalian target of rapamycin and rapamycin itself. Uh, David Sabatini was uh, integral to discovering that. He's the researcher at MIT. Also, I did a recent study on uh, sauna bathing and some signals that sauna bathing may actually increase um, longevity. Uh, these featured uh, Rhonda Patrick. Doc Many of you have been viewers of Dr. Patrick's and uh, her discussions about FOXO. It also uh, connects a couple of other dots, David Sinclair and the pill for longevity, and um, near Barzillai in New York with the TAME study, targeting aging with metformin. And we're, we're going to do all of that through yet another researcher, a researcher named Cynthia Kenyon. Now, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it may take a while, Cynthia Kenyon, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Let's go back and talk a little bit more about uh, the details. Uh, Walter Longo. <clears throat> First thing I would point out is that uh, in the Walter Longo studies, we showed that he did a lot of his um, original research on yeast, fungus, molds. Um, C. elegans right here, a very small uh, worm, which you'll see in uh, Dr. Kenyon's uh, YouTube video. We'll actually show you some live activities. Mice and rat, rats and humans. Another thing we talked about with Dr. Walter Longo was his interest in a population in uh, Ecuador. I think it's Ecuador. The Larone population. These folks have, and again, pardon the bad image um, or the foggy image, but here's the point. Uh, Larone patients have a genetic dwarfism, and that genetic dwarfism is a uh, defect of IGF-1. Remember that. Uh, insulin-like growth factor one. The other thing to remember about these folks that have that uh, defect with insulin growth factor one, they in the whole population, which is a lot of people, they've only had one case of diabetes, and they don't get cancers either. They die from trauma because they live in a world built for big people. That's uh, their most common problem. Now, let's switch back and talk about David uh, Sabatini for just a minute. He's at uh, MIT. He was uh, instrumental in the discovery of mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin. Um, and here's the key point. What he found was that rapamycin, which is a drug used for, uh, anti it's an anti-cancer drug. One of the ways it does that is it shuts down mTOR or mTORC1, which is one of the two subunits of mTOR. When it changes that mTORC1, it takes the body from anabolism, protein creation, growth, cell division, which uh, uncontrolled is cancer, to more of the catabolism type of mode where you're, the body's taking recycled proteins, the cell's not growing, and it's autophagy. So again, we've had several videos on autophagy as well. Speaking of, of autophagy, there was a, uh, there was a study uh, back in 2015 and then a follow-up study in 2018 regarding the association of sauna um, in Finland, sauna and longevity. Dr. Rhonda Patrick, again, many of you are big fans of hers, as am I, um, did a, several videos with um, uh, Joe Mercola, um, and I'm blanking on the, the comedian, something nation. Anyway, several videos on this topic. One of the things she mentioned was FOXO3. She said FOXO3 is the longevity gene. Uh, people with uh, this gene have... Uh, three times the probability of growing to be 100 years old. Actually, one of those studies appears to have been done by 
near Barzillai. It was done in Ashkenazi Jews in New York, and they found um, increased probability of the uh, FOXO3 defect gene, not the FOXO3 normal wild type gene, but the FOXO3 defect gene in, um, or a similar gene, which we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, increased in, um, in older people. Now, <clears throat> mice ha uh, had an increased expression of FOXO3. They live up to 30, the ones that have that live 30% longer. And the key to FOXO3 is the ability to turn on stress resistance, antioxidant ge genes, DNA repairs, which showed just a minute ago. And again, uh, driving autophagy. Speaking of autophagy, this is one of the uh, microbiological pathways, one of the metabolic pathways. We mentioned AMPK there. Remember, uh, AMPK is uh, impacted by um, uh, diabetes, by metformin, by uh, fasting. <clears throat> Here we have also uh, rapamycin, which we've all already discussed. Rapamycin impacting TORC1, TORC1 being one of the two complexes uh, associated with mTOR. Um, TORC1, again, being the one that is the switch from autophagy to cell growth, translational control, cell division, and again, that's why that appears to, uh, rapamycin appears to be an anti-cancer medication. If you give rapamycin, by the way, to some animals, you will, ex uh, you will extend their life, uh, double and triple, or double it or uh, increase it by 30% to 100%. So <clears throat> here's another view of those similar uh, metabolic pathways. And I wanted to mention that as well. This starts, so just to orient you, here's mTOR. And actually, this is mTORC1 because mTORC2 is up here. Um, rapamycin then would impact uh, mTOR. AMPK is over here in this view, and this is the autophagy pathway. Um, the other pathway appears to be protein translation on the left side. Now, <clears throat> again, read protein translation as uh, uh, cell growth and uh, cell division, or uh, not cancer, but Oh, that, that's, again, the, the cancer connection. Let's go back to this. This all starts with insulin and growth factor, IGF-1 receptor here on the cell membrane. Remember that because, again, we'll get into that in uh, Cynthia Kenyon's video. Speaking of which, here we go. Now, I wanted to just uh, hit several areas on her video. She starts out talking about well, let's just uh, get a look at Cynthia Kenyon. That's her. She's, a, again, a researcher in this area. She starts out pointing out that uh, uh, animals, even uh, similar size, may have very different lifespans. The mouse at two years, canary at 15, and bat at um, 50. Uh, then she goes on to talk about a worm. You remember that worm? Uh, Dr. Um, Longo uses that worm a good bit as well. Here's C. elegans. That's the same worm that she's talking about here. And she's talking about some things that you can uh, see with C. elegans. Um, here's one thing you see. If C. elegans has a mutant DAF2 gene, and we'll talk about that DAF2 gene again a little bit later. I'll, I'll give you the, the spoiler. It, it, the DAF2 uh, mutant has to do with uh, the binding for IGF-1 and insulin receptors. Um, for uh, worms that have a mutant DAF2 or IGF receptor binder, they don't bind uh, the growth hormones as well, and they live up to twice as long. And we're going to look at some of the, uh, the video on these animals. So this is, um, let's go back. Okay, that's a normal adult. You can see that worm's very healthy. 
uh, normal worms 13 days old. These worms typically live for two weeks. This worm is actually alive, but you can see it's all granular looking and only the head is moving. This is a geriatric worm. It's a worm that's nearing death due to old age. Now as the video goes on, this is another one with a couple of old dying worms. Here he's moving with his head. Now, <clears throat> this is the long-lived mutant worms. Look at that. Same age as the ones that were just not moving very fast, but moving like a young adult, half their age. And in fact, as she said, and as you saw in the previous uh, lifetime, lifeline, um, survival lines, they do live twice as long. So one day for a, a, um, a normal, what a, a mutant worm lives in uh, two days, they age the amount that a normal um, worm ages in one day. So, here she goes to say the DAF2 gene encodes a hormone receptor, the DAF2 receptor, and that is IGF, or and insulin receptors. Uh, so, <clears throat> again, uh, as I said, we're connecting a lot of biological dots here. Um, I just wanted to get to this. As we said earlier, again, connect this back to Walter Longo's um, uh, statement that these same, um, same genes are found in multiple areas, multiple mice, uh, mice, insects, um, fruit flies, uh, C. elegans, this worm that we've been watching. And as she said, the centenarians are likely to carry mutation that reduce, human centenarians, that reduce the activity of IGF-1 receptors, that uh, DAF-1 or DAF-2 receptor. Then those who die earlier, die earlier. And sorry, I had the, because of my ability to control it, I couldn't get a regular TED Talk. I had to get this TED Talk that was uh, published and captioned in uh, some Middle Eastern language, it looks like. But it's through the fog, you may be able to see Barzillai. So again, near Barzillai appears to have been associated with this study. So uh, let's go on and touch on some other dots real quick. So these um, worms um, that have the, mut the mutation, again, are resistant to old age-related diseases that kill the other worms more quickly. In human speak, that would be diabetes, eye disease from diabetes, cardiovascular disease from diabetes, heart, um, or heart disease from diabetes, or insulin resistance, um, dementia from insulin resistance, kidney disease, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I, I hope you're getting the point here. Now, at this point in the video, she actually starts to talk about uh, FOXO. Remember, uh, we've mentioned FOXO in the title, but we really haven't gotten there. We actually did show it in a couple of the uh, metabolic pathways. Um, <clears throat> in fact, let's go back and see if we can find FOXO in this metabolic pathway right here, survival signals. See, um, FOXO is associated with survival, and she talks about FOXO. Here's the thing. In DAF2 mutants, a protein called FOXO turns on genes that extend the lifespan. She, she gives the analogy that FOXO, the FOXO gene is a controller gene. It's a gene sort of like the superintendent of a building. If a hurricane's coming through, this FOXO gene turns on the carpenters that put covers over the windows, the plumbers that... Uh, do some things to shut off the plumbing so you don't get a plumbing problem, et cetera, et cetera. Now, <clears throat> what happens for the normal or wild type um, group? And we'll cover that in just a second here at 840. The normal DAF2 group, in the normal DAF2 groups, something happens that keeps FOXO from 
turning on. FOXO genes cannot turn on in a normal or wild type DAF2 hormone receptor, again, IGF receptor. So a couple of other things and I'll finish out. Um, 926, so um, why do you have that for this worm? During good times when there's a lot of food, insulin and IGF-1 signaling promote growth, growth of, and food storage. In bad times, low insulin and IGF-1 signaling activate FOXO, which triggers cell protection and repair. So again, helps, uh, helps all of us connect some dots here. <clears throat> How about the humans though? We've talked about other animals. This is actually a human FOXO3A DNA variant map for the world. And you may uh, notice that there's a significant overlap with, uh, what do they call it, green zones or blue zones or something? The longevity zones. There are two of them right there in Italy where uh, Walter Longo uh, grew up and uh, had neighbors like uh, Mr. Caruso who lived to be 108. Again, huge numbers of centenarians. So these DNA variants are associated with exceptional uh, longevity in populations from all over the world. Um, <clears throat> and last uh, interesting dot that we want to connect here, 1119. So now they're looking for small molecules that can activate FOXO3A in human cells. As David Sinclair has said multiple times, he's looking for a drug to delay aging and age-related diseases. Um, if you go back and look at some of those metabolic pathways, some of those pathways actually have uh, resveratrol and some of the other things he's worked with in terms of where they fit in these same pathways. Now, <clears throat> uh, eleven fifty one. Wanted to make one other um, point here. There are other ways to extend lifespan. You can inhibit another nutrient sensor called TOR with a drug called rapamycin. And again, just to remind you, TOR is the target of rapamycin, uh, mTOR1. Uh, mTORC1 is the thing that, that, show, that tells the cell to go into a, uh, an autophagy mode or into a cell growth uh, and division mode. So again, it's uh, been a long, a long video. Uh, those of you that have made it this far, I appreciate your interest.